Welcome back to Sunday Funday, where we review our M1 growth portfolio. In this video, we're going to review our deposits, our purchases, and our dividends we did not receive because this is a growth portfolio. These stocks do not pay dividends. So we opened a traditional brokerage account within M1 Finance, and um, we deposited uh, our first hundred dollars to start our investing journey back on 421 of 20. And we actually used a portion of our stimulus check to start that account. So um, if you would like to receive some extra money from M1 Finance for starting an investing account, it's the most automated, easiest to use brokerage account that I personally have. Um, basically, you just need to set up the account, link your bank account to it, like a checking account, and then transfer the money to the account. And then M1 Finance, after you pick your after you pick where you want your money to be invested, whether you want to put it in an ETF like VOO or VTI, or if you want to pick a whole bunch of different individual stocks, you can do that, or a mix of ETFs and individual stocks. Once you deposit your money the next day at 9.30, it just buys whichever whichever stocks you need to uh, balance your pie out. If you want to get some extra money from M1 Finance, make sure you check out the link down below where um, you can deposit $100 and M1 Finance will give you um, possibly up to $50 for doing that. So if that's a 50% uh, return. So if you put in $100, M1 Finance will send you $50. Um, so that's a pretty good return on your money. But for the month of December and January, and back in December, we were uh, we have been taking the $25 that our employer gives us for our wellness credit, plus adding $25 of our own to it. So we were depositing $50 every paycheck into this account. Um, every once in a while when the uh, stock market went down quite a bit, we would put some extra money in. On the 6th, we put an extra $100. And then on the 17th, we put an extra $50. Um, but we were able to add for the month, that whole month, we were able to add $250. And so far in 2022, we've been able to add $150. Um, I recently switched jobs, so I no longer get the $25 health credit. So I'm going to have to figure out a new plan of uh, taking other people's money and investing it for my benefit. Um, I believe this new employer, they give us uh, $5 for a no smoking credit. So um I'll have to come up with uh, some way to track that money. Um, basically, so far, um, I've just been putting $50 in whenever I wanted to. So um, no real system to it yet. Um, my goal for 2022, though, is to get this account up to where I have at least one share of each stock, which is a pretty big task I have to come over. Um because if I leave, I'm gonna to have to deposit enough money to get one share of Amazon, which is three thousand dollars. I have a, a bad feeling there's going to be a split between um, Amazon and Google, which is Alphabet. Um, and the way M1 Finance works with that is if they do the split and you don't have one share, you get paid out. So I'm gonna get uh, I'll end up getting cashed out on those two if I don't get one share of those. Um, so basically I'm going to have to deposit about at least $5,000 to get them up to, uh, over $5,000. Probably going to have to deposit about $7,000 just to get those over one share. Um, but as far as purchases so far for the month, for December and January, we were able to add uh, about two tenths of a share of Facebook. We were able to add... A super, a super small share of Amazon, and about a third of a share of Netflix. We also added a super small amount of Google, small sliver of Berkshire Hathaway. Berkshire Hathaway recently went up a lot in price. As you can see, the last time we purchased Berkshire, it was under three hundred dollars, and now it's three twenty four. So it's neat to see the range of prices that you uh, buy the stocks at when you dollar cost average. Like if you look at Google right here, like. I mean, we originally purchased it for $1,200, and the last time we purchased it, it was $2,700. So uh, this is one thing I'm starting to pay attention to is um, I've had a few stocks where if I would have just put a larger amount in, in the beginning, um, I would have done a lot better. Like if I would have put in um, 
say $100 this first time instead of $25, I would have doubled my money. Um, so that's one thing I'm trying to pay attention to when I start a new position is to um, to put a larger amount in initially and then put smaller amounts in after that. But to really commit to starting a position. As you can see, the, the total returns for each stock is vastly different between each individual stock but overall the portfolio has went up 15 percent which is a pretty good return um it's pretty neat to see that i took um money that normally most people would have spent on other things and bought some stocks with it and we were able to take twenty six hundred dollars and basically turn it into three thousand dollars so this is the account the traditional brokerage account i i set up and i i did it this way because with these being growth stocks unless i sell any of these which i don't plan on selling any of them at the moment i do not have to pay any taxes on it so this would be a, a one way to uh start investing to where you don't have to worry about taxes is opening a regular traditional brokerage account with M1 Finance and um, picking growth stocks. Basically, these stocks are some of the biggest companies in the world and they're in most ETFs. So as the ETFs go up, you can benefit from having the individual stock price go up for you. And then you can, you can put your you can buy whatever else you want in your Roth IRA if you set that up with M1 Finance. And then all the dividends that are inside of those accounts, you don't have to pay taxes on. So you could still not have to worry about taxes and invest if you use this strategy like I did here so that you don't have to uh, pay taxes or worry about your tax return and your dividend income. Um, once you sell a share though, you will have to pay capital gains tax on that, whether it's long-term capital gains or short-term capital gains. Or if you sell it for a loss, um, you can use that loss for next year. Remember this is Sunday Fun Day where we review our Weeble dividend portfolio, our M1 Finance Roth IRA, our Fidelity Health Savings Account, and our M1 Finance Growth Portfolio. Currently, all four of our investments accounts are up to $44,000, and it's currently generating about $5.27 a day in dividend income, which is totally passive income. So every month, we we are able to generate about $160 that we can buy more stocks with. So if you were putting in, say, $100 a month, theoretically, after this has been three years that we've been doing this, if I'm still putting in the $100, I'm technically putting in $260 every month. It's one way to make your money work as hard as you do. There's a link down in the description below if you want to start investing with M1 Finance, where if you deposit $100, M1 Finance may give you all the way up to $50. So check out the link below. You can also set up a Roth IRA with M1 Finance and really automate your investing. If you want to watch other investing videos, click the link on the screen or check out the sidebar. Thanks for watching.